class. My name is Varun Mathur. Uh, this is the second video on uh, my YouTube channel. And as I mentioned in the previous introduction, I will be taking a trip to Ranthambore with my cousins and friends shortly. Uh, that time has come. We are planning our travel and tomorrow morning will be off. But I thought before I go, let me speak to you a little bit about uh, Ranthambore, you know, how we planned it and, um, and you know, what kind of gear I'm carrying with me so uh, and why I have made that choice. So uh, Ranthambur Tiger Reserve is probably one of the most uh, popular tiger reserves within the country and uh, the main reason for this is that it lies within what we call the Golden Triangle which is Delhi, Agra and Jaipur. Uh, it is about three and a half hours from Jaipur. Uh, if you are driving from Delhi like I would be, it would take anywhere from seven to eight hours. The roads are fantastic. Uh, from Agra again, it's not too far away, about five hours or so, five, five and a half hours. Um, so, so it lies right in the center of, uh, you know, this particular triangle. That's why it has been very popular, not only uh, within the domestic market, but also with the international travelers. And a large number of you might have been there. But uh, it is a park that I've been visiting in, since the early 80s. Um, my father used to work for the Indian Railways and we were posted in Kota which is about two, two and a half hours away uh, from uh, Ranthambore and at that point of time there were literally no tourists. Uh, there were no organized jeep safaris. Uh, you could go to the heart of the park. There is a, there's a, uh, there's a old hunting lodge uh, uh, within the park and quite often we used to actually stay there. Today this is off limits. Um, you know, as as uh, time goes by, you realize how many restrictions keep getting added on rather than being taken away. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to spend some time in those hunting lodge lodges when I was uh, you know a young boy. Uh, and we've seen some spectacular scenes of tiger hunting in Padam Lake, uh, which you know you oversee when you are staying at Jogi Mahal. Uh, Jogi Mahal is the hunting lodge that I'm speaking about. Anyhow, today uh, the park is a lot more organized. Uh, it is uh, divided into 10 tourist zones because tourism has really grown. Uh, it used to be earlier just five zones, uh, which was largely... So how the park uh, largely came about, it used to be the hunting uh, grounds for the Maharaja of Jaipur. And there's a fort right in the center of the park and the forest is all around it. Uh, it is a remarkable uh, park in terms of landscape. Uh, you have beautiful ruins uh, surrounded by lakes and uh, to find wildlife in this area uh, you know, makes for a very beautiful environment photograph how the jungle has taken over uh, man-made elements and how animals have adapted to even use some of those places. So you sometimes find tigers in the chhatris, uh, you, you, would, you would have uh, you know buildings where owls would be uh, roosting in that area. So there would be very interesting uh, things, uh, landscape shots, uh, uh, environment shots with wildlife in it, uh, which one can uh, you know, take in Ranthambo. And it is very accessible to most areas in northern India. Getting there is very easy. Uh, you can take a Jan Shatabdi from Delhi, which gets you straight into uh, Savai Madhapur. Uh, you can you can go uh, fly into uh, Jaipur and then you know it's just three and a half hours drive from there. Uh, you can even drive down from Delhi. I mean, last one one and a half years, that's what I've been doing in the COVID lockdown. As soon as uh, lockdown eased a little bit, uh, me along with some friends of mine and you know once with my family, we just gone down the road. It takes you about seven hours to get there. Now. Uh, the route that we plan to take uh, tomorrow morning is uh, we are going to go down uh, the highway going up to Jaipur. So we don't go all the way up to Jaipur, so it's going to be Delhi, Gurgaon, I am based in Delhi. So I will be leaving from Delhi um, and the plan is to leave at around 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and you know, we, we pass Gurgaon, we go to, through Mindrana to Shapura and from a place called Manuharpur we take a left. There's a beautiful new highway which connects into Dosa, onwards to Lal Sot, and then finally into Savai Madhapur, which is the main town uh, that gives you access to Ranthambore Tiger Reserve. Now, um, in terms of wildlife, uh, yes, as everyone else, I do wish to see the tiger. 
Uh, there have been some wonderful sightings. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a beautiful tigress called Arrowhead who has two cubs. Uh, her daughter Riddhi again uh, has been mating with another tiger. Uh, in a different zone, in zone 1, uh, and I will take you through a map somewhere down uh, in this video, uh, where I will talk about the various zones of Pranthambo. Today there are 10 zones because the number of guests that are going there is much higher. So in order to spread out the tourism so that everybody is not you know, uh, consolidating or hanging out in one place, hunting one particular tiger, uh, the government has tried to spread it out throughout the park and tiger can be found throughout no matter which zone you go to. In fact, there is a tigress called Sultana, she is the daughter of a ta another famous tigress called Noor, uh, who is main part of her territory is zone 1, which she shares with her mother with another male tiger called T101. Uh, and of course, uh, her, her sister as well. Uh, so. Her area tends to be a little small and what, from what I hear and the information I gather, quite often she's been seen on the main road leading in towards zone 1 to 5. And uh, it is also a route that goes up to Ranthambo Fort. There's a very famous Ganesha temple on top and there are many pilgrims that walk each day on the central uh, road that, that gives you access to the fort and eventually to uh, the Ganesha temple. It is a very revered temple and uh, there are people who you know, walk right through the park on this road going all the way up. Now, yes, there are always uh, you know, challenges uh, where, where as wildlife is concerned, quite often tigers cross this road. Uh, in the past, we've seen a leopard that came very close to being crushed by a motorcycle of you know, pilgrims going up to the fort. But, um, but you know, all things aside, it has been relatively safe. Uh, this has been happening over the last 20 years. Uh, of course, people have been going to the fort even before that. But uh, it's, it's now that, you know, Ranthambore actually sees the tourist pressure. So uh, that's a little bit about Ranthambore. Uh, the wildlife I want to see is not only tigers. We are also looking for sloth bears, leopards. Uh, hyenas and foxes can be usually found outside the park. Uh, and what we do, I don't know if you'd have time to explore that much, is go out at night, uh, you know, uh, just outside the lodges and explore the area. Usually these um, animals get attracted to the city dump sites. Uh, it is unfortunate, but uh, it is easy to find them there. There is a, there's a helipad there, which, uh, uh, which where you can go at night and uh, it's a great place to see fox as well as hyenas. Once in a while, you may come across a leopard or a tiger as well who's jumped the fence and gone looking, uh, you know, to catch catch some uh, goat or a cow. But, uh, so, uh, those are the main species that we go looking for. Of course, there's a large prey base that uh, exists over there. You not only have some deer, cheetah, which you find in other parks, you also have antelope species uh, like the Nilgai and the Chinkara, which is the Indian gazelle. Um, these are these are unique species. You don't find uh, chinkaras everywhere in all the forests. So uh, again, it's interesting to see how these different species exist in different landscape. Uh, Ranthambo is a mix. Uh, you do have hilly terrain. It is part of the Aravalis. So uh, you do have very unique landscapes. Uh, so you have grasslands. You have beautiful lakes. You have forts and these uh, fort ruins in the middle of the park. So it makes for very interesting photography. Now, talking about photography, I would like to talk about the gear that I would be carrying. Um, of course, I'm trying to move away from still photography, so I would like to do a little bit of videos as well. So the key uh, camera gear that I have for most of my shoots is my D500 with a 200-500 lens. I do prefer zooms, uh, especially if I'm going in a crowded jeep, I do not have the flexibility of carrying prime lenses with me. They are much larger, heavier, difficult to maneuver, especially in a crowded jeep. And in this case, since I'm traveling with, you know, family, with cousins, uh, it's going to be a crowded affair. So uh, I have a shorter lens, it's a 200-500 it's a zoom lens, it works very well, it has a fixed uh, 5.6 aperture. Um, it, it has done very well in the past and I am very happy with this set of gear. 
I get additional zoom because of the crop sensor body and D500 is just spectacular. I mean the performance is fantastic since the day I bought it. Even now in, in the world of mirrorless cameras, I still think it is a fantastic set of gear to have. Uh, my backup camera is a full frame camera. It is a D750 body. It's a full frame camera which I have paired up with a 17-200 2.8 lens. This is more so for low light conditions when animals are relatively close to me. Let's say it is an ideal setup to have uh, if you're entering the park early in the morning or leaving late in the evening and uh, you happen to chance upon a tiger or an animal at a at relatively close distance so that you don't need that zoom. Uh, it is a it has a 2.8 range so uh, that gives me additional light and on a full frame body you know that's just fantastic for low light conditions. Uh, so that is that is always going to be my backup camera. It is also a setup that I use for videography a little bit. Uh, I have been in the last one year. I am not really a video person but just getting into it. And I believe this gear for now is good enough for me to do uh, uh, do some great video work. Um, it is not the same as uh, the benefits I would get from the new mobile system. Of course, technology keeps going up. But again, you know, given the current situation for travel and for from a business perspective, I do not wish to spend more money right now. So I think I can make this gear work for the time being. What I also have with me is a Tokina 11 to 16 uh, lens. Uh, this is a new landscape lens which I bought. Uh, it is it is for uh, a, a crop sensor body which I pair. Uh, I, I also use it on on my uh, D750. I do not get uh, 11 uh, mm focal length, but uh, you know I am practically shooting at about 16. Uh, which allows me not to get, um, you know, what do you call it? Which allows me not to get uh, vignetting. Uh, typically, if I use it at 11 mm, I would get very, very heavy vignetting, and you know, it's like a little circle in the center. But if I use it at 16 mm, it works absolutely fine. I also always carry with me a macro lens. This is a 105 mm Nikon macro uh, 2.8, and this is just a superb lens. I've had it for a while. Uh, while at the lodge, you may find very interesting butterflies, dragonflies, uh, and uh, this just works very well for any kind of macro photography. I have used it quite often on stick insects, spring mantis. Uh, depending on what you find, you know, in between safaris, there's ample time to walk around and to actually do macro photography work. Um, and then this little setup is uh, what my daughter uses. She's 14 years old, and I'm getting her into photography. She's been doing some photography for a bit, but this is her step up into the DSLR world. We have a 150-600 mm camera lens. Uh, which has been paired up with a Canon, Canon uh, 7500 body. Uh, it, it has been working very well. This setup used to belong to my sister. Uh, she is now upgraded her gear, moved to you know the R5 body and uh, lenses to go with that. Uh, we also have an 1855 kit lens. Uh, this is great when you are doing landscape photography. And of course, no wildlife trip is complete without a set of binoculars. Uh, Ranthambo has a fantastic uh, bird life and uh, there are very interesting species that one wants to find over there. Uh, for me some interesting species to photograph are the painted spur fowl, the different type of owls that you find there. Um, so, uh, so this comes in very handy. Uh, this is ED glass and uh, this is really really nice. It's a, it's a, it's a relatively old set of binoculars. I've been using them for the last four years, five years. Um, this is the first time I bought uh, binoculars from a company called Hawk. And uh, I particularly find the price point excellent uh, for ED quality glass. Uh, so that's what we have in mind. Uh, the idea is tomorrow morning I leave my place at about 4.30 or so, pick up my friend en route and then onwards to run them board.
I'm at Ranthambore now and uh, we are planning uh, to take about five safaris. Uh, we have safaris in zone uh, 3, 2, 5, 6 and then we'll see where uh, one safari we have on current booking basis and we'll take a call on you know wh what zones are available and where we can get a chance. So um, let's see what we find. It is one of the most popular parks in the country. Uh, today it has been divided into 10 tourist zones and the main reason for that is so that tourism could spread, uh, you know, uh, uh, tourism is growing so it can now, you know, uh, spread across various areas rather than, you know, be congested in one location. Uh, the park itself started off uh, with just zones what today is zones 1 to 5 and these are zones which are primarily around the Ranthambo fort. Uh, it is still one of the more scenic areas of the park because it has fort ruins, it has a lake, uh, actually it has a couple of lakes and uh, there's a good conglomeration of animals in and around the lake. Um, why I say in is because it has an excellent bird life, it has crocodiles, um, and of course it has swamp deers that go into uh, the water bodies. Uh, you also have tigers coming and trying to hunt at the edge of the water body and quite often you know if you're lucky you can see a struggle between the tigers and the crocodiles. Let's see what we get to see. Uh, zone 2 should be great to not only see arrowhead to see uh, there's a male over there called T57. Uh, there used to be there's an old tigers called Noor uh, her daughter Nuri has taken over that area, so let's see what we get to see. Um, there's a tiger called T60. Um, her offsprings are there. So <clears throat> let's see, you know, uh, what we are able to find. And um, I mean, since a large number of us are traveling here for the first time, I mean, besides myself, so uh, I know a large focus is going to be on tiger. And uh, let's see how that goes. <music>
call the place where I'm staying. Uh, this property is called Ramthambore Heritage Haveli. It belongs to a friend of mine, Raju Meena. He organizes all my safaris. Uh, I work with him even for organizing safaris for those who uh, travel with me. And um, in the background, you can see it's built like a Haveli. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a relatively inexpensive place. Uh, very comfortable, neat, clean rooms, hot and cold running water, excellent food, um, especially if you're looking for uh, Indian cuisine, uh, the kind of food that, you know, uh, that this area is known for. Uh, food is superb. Uh, I'm talking about Indian cuisine, of course. Uh, in terms of Western cuisine, maybe not so much. But if you are willing to experiment with Indian food, uh, this is food is amazing. Uh, the service uh, that the local boys provide is awesome. Uh, and our stay has been very comfortable. Uh, we are here, we've taken up three, four rooms in a certain part of the Haveli. So, you know, a sort of a block becomes our own. Uh, this way, we, you know, we can sit at night and, you know, sit and chit chat and, uh, you know, just spend some good family time together. Uh, in my mind, it's an amazing investment uh, because you're not spending that much on a property, yet it's neat and clean with great service. Uh, and I would rather put, you know, the rest of the money that I have in my budget on safaris. This helps me uh, do more safaris and more safaris means more pictures. Uh, it means, you know, more chances of spotting the tiger and photographing various wildlife that exists in this park. So that's a little bit about Ranthambore Heritage Haveli. It's not too far from zones 1 to 5. Uh, the gate is about 10, 12 minutes away. Uh, if you're going to zone 6 to 10, then almost every other property is as far as this one, uh, which will take you minimum half an hour and going all the way up to one hour to reach one, one hour, 20 minutes to reach zone 9. So uh, I guess zone 9 is not the best option for anyone. Although it's supposed to be a fantastic zone, uh, I believe there's a lot of tiger sighting and a lot of animal movement. But for most, it's just too far at the moment. Uh, let's see, one day I will take out time to go and explore it. Uh, in the meantime, you know, I would like to maximize my opportunities. And uh, for that, this place works out just perfect.